Okay, welcome back. Previously, I posed a question which I didn't tell you that I'd love to ask certain picky Unish people who are finding fault with me, and it does happen often. Before I do tell you that, though, I do want to point out I'm wearing a new shirt today, okay? You probably noticed that last time, but I got four new shirts because of one gracious viewer, and uh, I'm liking this one very much. Now, what is that question? Well, when people are fault finders, you know, Jesus talked about, you know, you're finding the uh, speck in your brother's eye, but you're not noticing the log in your own eye. And I think that's, that's what I think of when I get one of these emails that I do sadly frequently get when people find some little fault in me. I want to write back, and I, I most often resist the temptation, but I would like to write back, and I have done this at times, and I'll say, okay, before I address this issue that is so paramount in your mind, you know, this major issue and this major flaw that I have. Can I ask you a question first so I can decide whether or not uh, we should continue this discussion? Uh, please tell me in the last year how many hungry Christians who are needing food have you fed? How many who are needing water have you provided a drink for? How many in prison have you visited? How many sick have you gone to? You know the questions I'm talking about, the Matthew 25 questions that, that are the questions that separate the sheep from the goats. You see, if you're finding fault with somebody and you're a goat, guess what? God's found a big log in your eye. You're not even saved. You're not even going to go to heaven. You're going to be in hell. And so you're finding fault with me because we put out uh, some. We put the word Christmas in our December uh, magazine article, and we're celebrating pagan holidays here. You know, as if as if it's some kind of grave idolatry. Uh, even though that we completely focus on the birth of Christ, we read the Christmas story from the Bible on Christmas morning, and we sing Happy Birthday to Jesus. You're telling me that I'm some great sinner, and you, your life. Life is characterized by the same thing that the goats in Matthew 25 are. Who, who are you? Okay? And so that's the essence of what Christ was saying here. You know, you're making the little things the big things. What I really desire is I desire compassion. You're all focused on the, the peripheral aspects, you know, the religious aspects, the ceremonial aspects of the law of Moses, but there's much more important things than that, like loyalty, as the, it says in Hosea 6.6, 6, and like compassion, like it says in Mark, or excuse me, Matthew chapter 7 and verse, uh, Matthew chapter 12 and verse number 7. Okay, verse number eight. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Departing from there, he went into their synagogue. I appreciate the fact that he did that because they were finding fault with him on the Sabbath and he goes into their synagogue on the Sabbath. It would either be Friday night after sundown or any time at all on Saturday before Saturday at sundown. That's the Jewish Sabbath, that's the biblical Sabbath. Catch this now, there's no doubt that, uh, well, it sounds like these things happen simultaneously, that this, the two incidents are right after each other. Uh, d uh, verse number 10, and a man was there whose hand was withered. And they questioned Jesus asking, now they're still on the same doggone issue, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? That's their question so that they might accuse him. So Jesus is not challenging them, you know, at all this time. He's there in the synagogue, and there's this man who's, you know, apparently born with some kind of deformity or is handicapped in some way that his hand is withered. It sounds to me like a birth defect, okay? And um, they're asking him because they're so, you know, certain that he's probably gonna heal this guy. And they like set him up to tempt him. We'll put up, let's put that with a hand guy in there. We'll see, you know, if we can get Jesus to do it on the Sabbath and so forth. And, and you know, it, he wouldn't be, he can't be from God if he heals on the Sabbath because that's working on the Sabbath. You know, uh, it's just amazing how stupid spiritual religious leaders can be sometimes. And, um, and again, they're hoping he, they're hoping, they're hoping that he heals this guy so that they can say, aha, we knew you can't be from God because healing is definitely working and that shouldn't be done on the Sabbath. Ah, the, uh, the logic of these guys is just absolutely incredible. And so Jesus, much more contained and controlled than I am right now, gently, with you know sincerity, he said to them, 
just to provoke them to think. This is verse number 11. What man is there among you who has a sheep? And if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will he not take hold of it and lift it out? Well, they all know they are going to be internally nodding. Of course, of course, we don't want to let our sheep be, you know, in a pit on the Sabbath, you know, so that's not work. We can lift that pit, that sheep out of, the, out of the pit. Verse 12, how much more valuable then is a man than a sheep? So then it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Oh my goodness. You know, you can detect the sarcasm in his voice and he must have been shaking his head. Oh, it's okay to do good on the Sabbath, since you guys think it's not. You don't want this man healed. You'll, get, you'll take care of your sheep, but you don't care about this man. And uh, Jesus says, how much more valuable than, uh, than is a man than a sheep? Well, a little message there for the save the baby whales people. Um, you know, I'm all for saving the baby whales and, and so forth. Um, you know, and I'm not gonna get into all, all of that, but I saw somebody with a t-shirt on and said, save the baby humans, you know, and so people get all excited about saving trees, saving uh, penguins, saving whales, and, and again, these are all good, worthy causes, but while, while we're getting all excited with that, we're murdering human beings created in the image of God, okay? And so that shows that we're really messed up here as to, you know, what's really important to God. So then, verse 13, then Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and it was restored to normal like the other. Uh, no faith, it seems, required by this man, but certainly had to obey Jesus and stretch out his hand and still the miracle happened. And what happened next was even more incredible. So I'll see you next time.